Well, all of us have some big challenges to deal with in our climbing and our lives in general now. I imagine that there's not one of you watching this who hasn't been touched already by the coronavirus. I've been already affected and so has the rest of my family in quite a big way. All sorts of things that have affected um, our lives already and I'm sure it's the same for you, if not worse in many cases. And uh, for those of you who have some really serious problems to deal with, then um, I wish you well and uh, I hope you can do all you can uh, to get through it. In my book Make or Break, I repeatedly make the point that when bad, unavoidable things happen, you should try your best to make the best of them and to turn them to your advantage in order to come out ahead. A lot of what I'll be doing is really applying a lot of the principles that I wrote down in my book to my own climbing, but also the rest of my life. And I'll go through all of those in a whole series of episodes. Many of you have contacted me over the past few days to ask for some guidance on how to use your home training facilities, if any, things like a fingerboard, rings, or even just bodyweight exercises to make the best of um, the time at home and the limited access to other facilities to maintain or improve your fitness and you definitely can do this with some minimal equipment. Before I start this episode I just wanted to say that I will do those um, I've just this afternoon handed in a big piece of work for university so I've been kind of busy with that over the past few uh, weeks um, and I will as quick as I can move on to uh, making up some, some training videos and also some videos about getting outside and climbing. Um, the one thing in the UK that we are so, so fortunate to have is that our outdoors is not closed. It may not be a great idea to go climbing in a busy area with lots of other people, but you certainly can go out climbing alone. And that's what I spend 90% of my climbing time doing. And I'm really lucky that I'm going to be able to keep doing that. If there's one thing that I would say to all climbers, but especially those people who rely on indoor spaces to climb, is try and find some outdoor space to climb that you can access. Of course, this crisis really brings home the value of living near the mountains and having ready access to places to go climb that are on your doorstep. Not everyone has access to those immediately. As I say, I've been busy with um, a big assignment for university over the past couple of weeks, and so I've not been able to edit. I, I have been, however, uh, working away in here and also outside uh, doing some training and, and bouldering. And so the episode that will follow in a moment and one after that, um, I will actually be going back in time to the last few weeks as I've been doing some training. You might remember that in my last episode, I'd actually just gained an injury in this arm, which is now much, much better and is feeling maybe 85% normal. It's really almost pain-free and... Um, although I've not regained all of the strength back in this arm, I am starting to work on the harder boulder problems on my board again, which feels absolutely brilliant. But I'm going to take you back in time now to about maybe three weeks ago or so, uh, to when I was just starting to move on this board again. Um, and since then, I've made a lot of progress. And in the, the next few episodes, you'll see how quick that, that progress has been. And hopefully yourselves, when you're either at home or bouldering out on the crags in the coming few weeks, you'll be able to make that same kind of progress. In the meantime, enjoy this episode and do remember to look out for your family, your friends, your neighbours, strangers that you don't know who may be around you and in need of some help. So I'm just trying to get back into a little bit of training to rehab this injury. It is making a fair bit of progress, it's feeling better every day and um, I'm feeling more and more normal. I came in here three days ago and I just very tentatively warmed up on 15 degree board going round and round and that felt reasonably comfortable. Um, you know, no pain on, on actually doing sort of easy moves up to sort of French 7A. So I tentatively moved on to this board and didn't try any bouldering but I just did my easiest circuit on big holds. And then I did a few reps of a 7C circuit. I basically did a, a power endurance sort of session uh, and that seemed to go okay. I still felt really weak just trying to hang off the fingerboard. I, I couldn't, there was no way I could actually hang on the, the bad arm. Um, I still felt way too tentative for that. Then I had one rest day and then a session in the gym and I was just doing you know, basic upper body uh, weights workout and doing some bicep curls and that felt encouraging, it felt better again. I could only lift half the weight with my bad arm as I could with my good arm, um, but it was feeling 
uh, substantially better. And what really encouraged me was, although it was a little bit sore the following morning, by the afternoon, it had really settled down and felt good again. Uh, so it felt like it was recovering from that session quite fast. Um, and then I had one more rest day, and then I've come back in again today. And I've actually just done an 80 plus circuit on these wood holes. And I managed to complete that um, quite quickly. And yeah, I felt, I felt really good on it. I felt like um, I had no hesitation, no pain on any of the moves. Uh, so I've tried a little bit of fingerboarding and that went okay. I could actually do some hangs on my bad arm, although I had to pull up into a 90 degree angle in order for it not to feel painful. Uh, but once I did that, that felt okay. And it still obviously felt a lot weaker. Um, you know, my hangs were a lot worse on, on this arm, but they weren't ridiculously bad. So that's really encouraging. Uh, so finally, uh, I tried a little bit of uh, foot off bouldering just to try and, you know, keep progress going and improve my, my pulling strength. And on easy foot off moves, I feel okay. But actually with both arms, I feel quite weak still, um, just from the lack of recent, you know, hard pulling. Um, and pulling onto the campus rungs uh, on my 45 board there, there's still no way I can move off that on my left arm like with a, with a really rapid, powerful pull. Uh, so there's still a fair bit to go. And I'm just gonna finish off with some more uh, endurance circuits and that'll do for now. But I'm feeling super encouraged. I'm actually able to feel like I'm doing normal training again. And so the key in this stage is just not to overcook it, just to say, okay, just do a few sessions like this, see how it goes, and then step to the next level and push it a little bit harder with some harder bouldering, some more foot off, maybe two, three, four, five sessions of foot off bouldering. Uh, on big holds, quite juggy, quite controlled, still with a lot of control. You know, I'm really, I'm not doing super hard moves here. Um, nothing that I could like miss the next hold and come onto that arm. I'm, I'm not doing that at all. Um, but if I do that for another few sessions to the point where I feel like I've got nearly all the strength, you know, not so far away from having all the strength back in, in this arm. Uh, and, you know, I don't have any apprehension about moving quickly on it. Uh, then I could progress to trying some very easy campusing um, and uh, you know try to regain my one arm pull up strength on that arm. But all of that's a while away, but I'm pleased with the progress so far. So let's carry on. It's usually the weather that dictates the type of climbing that we do. And in Scotland, it was the wettest February since records began. But apart from a few very windy and wet runs, such as this one on Benny and Torridon, I've been mostly doing some bouldering and training. I just came into Benny today, just stood by the lock and had a really nice run, right? 60 mile an hour winds today. It's like, it has been quite good and there is, there is ice in the quarries. I was looking over to Leah earlier and the ice runs look really nice. But then it's just like drastic thaw. Eight hours, it's all going. It's such a bummer. I kind of like to get a bit of momentum going for a good winter season. And, you know, we've reached after the middle of February and still haven't done anything. None of the routes I want to do have been in condition. So you kind of think, well, should we just wait until it's better? I think that's probably what I'm going to do. Although the first rule of Scottish winters is they will surprise you. So we'll, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. If it comes good, then we could always do one or two nice routes. Right, here we go, let's run back. Even at this stage before the coronavirus crisis kicked off, the principle of trying to turn the circumstances that you're in to your advantage still applied and uh, always applies to uh, the training and, and preparation and climbing that I'm doing at any given moment. Really the basic idea is to play on with base training, working on my finger strength, working on my upper body strength, working on my bouldering skill repertoire, and also taking care of work so that when the weather does finally turn good, as it always does eventually, even in Scotland, then I'm ready to take advantage of good conditions when they come.